Hello everyone. So today we are going to work with lagged multiple regression. In this playlist on YouTube, I have made 15 videos on forecasting. So starting from the basic concepts to the different type of uh, advanced concepts like um, rolling forecast, expanding forecast, uh, cross validation. So co covering all these concepts, then we start with simple, very simple models like moving average, total average, weighted average, simple exponential smoothing. Then we go to halt trend and then halt winters. And then we made videos until multiple uh, regression methods. So in this video, I'm going to cover lagged multiple regression videos. So first, before we start, just to cover the concepts a little bit, how does really lagging work? So for example, here, let's say this is our situation. We have a data set, we have date, time series data, we have date, we are trying to forecast cells and these are our variables, okay? So these are our variables using days, we are going to forecast the cells and this is today. So we are on the 14th of November, 2017, for example, okay? So we want to forecast tomorrow, 15th of November. That's what we want to forecast. We want to forecast the cells tomorrow, okay? Now here, we need to know if we are using a regression, multiple linear regression format or multiple input variable format, we need the data of our input variables, okay? So now the thing is, you know, if we already know this data, maybe some of this we might know, but if we know all the data of tomorrow, most likely they come together with our cells data already. So we might not have this data av available for predicting what will be the value tomorrow. We are here today, so we might not know already today all the data of these input variables for tomorrow. So how can we really make the forecast for tomorrow? I and mean, one way could be also to the, do the forecast based on this data for all the variables for tomorrow as well, and then use those forecasted values to forecast the value of cells tomorrow, right? But another way could be we can actually do it in a better way. We can do using lags. So we can introduce lags. So we move the, so here you see 16, 3047% rain. This row of data for our input variables, it was here. It was for the 9th of November. Now we moved it to 10th of November. So now we can actually use, so this data, although it comes in the row of 10th of November, this is actually, the, this part of the data is actually the data from the 9th of November. So we can now use this to predict the cells of 10th of November. So we basically lagged the data by one period, okay? We can also introduce two lags. So, and if we introduce two lags, it will actually also help us to forecast tomorrow and day after tomorrow. So now we can forecast two days or two periods using two lags. We can introduce three lags, okay? So one idea could be to think about like this. If you want to forecast 12 months ahead, it is good to have 12 lags in your data. Okay, then you can always use the past 12 months data of your input variables to forecast the future variables. We can also lag the target. You see the cells variable itself, we can also introduce it in another column. So three days ago cells, that can be also used to actually predict the future cells. So that's another very good idea. Often it is, it improves the forecast performance significantly. We can also mix lags, as you can see here. So maybe cells on a third lag, present employees on the second lag, ad spending first lag. So we, we use different lags for different variables. And this is something like we might have a reason behind it. We might have a theoretical or practical reason behind it based on the data availability and so on. Or we might do trial and error to see which lag structure gives us higher forecast accuracy. So we can look into the accuracy in terms of MAP, you know, in terms of uh, R square, in terms of RMSC, and we can see which gives us the highest accuracy. And why lagging works? Because in the real world, data has lags. You know, whatever field you are going to look into, like for example, here we are looking at advertising and sales. You know, you spend money in advertising, the effect comes after some time, right? When we, I'm, I'm a professor of shipping and logistics, we do a lot of research about shipping markets. Here also, there is a bad news, then it takes some time to, for that news to be reflected in the shipping market. If the market is doing great, 
that you, you maybe order a ship, the supply or the delivery of it comes with lags, and then also you have uh, lags in the market structure. So in real world, most of the things work with lags, and that's why lagging works in forecasting. So now let's try to see with an example how we can make it work. So here we are working with the data. Uh, we have data of the shipping market for this route, BCI, Baltic uh, Capsize Index, BCI route number C3, to borrow to Qingdao. Uh, here we have 160 to 170,000 uh, deadweight tonnage vessel, and here we have the price per ton. This is our main variable that we are interested in. We want to predict the freight. And here we have the data from January 19 until December 2023. So we are going to forecast from December January 2024 to December 2024. So the next 12 years we are going to forecast. So we can just do a multiple linear regression model based on the data here. But now I'm going to show you how to do it in lag. So we are going to basically move these data, these variables, you know, we are going to lag them by 12 periods so that we can forecast the next 12 you know, we can forecast the 12 periods here in the end. So that's what we are going to do, okay? Here also note that here we have this variable cape size barcal in two formats. So this is very large value. I converted it into long. This is a uh, standard process in, in, in time series modeling or any kind of regression modeling. If we have very large values, which, fluctu which can fluctuate significantly, so we normally convert them into log. And uh, to do that, I basically took the lawn function and the variables. So that's what it is. I'm going to, in my forecasting model, use only the lawn converted series, okay? I'm not going to use this one. Okay, so here is my lagged version, right? So I just moved this data down one period. And then I have the data here by one more period. And I can use this for making predictions for this period, okay? So now let's see what can we do. So one of the things I'm going to do is, I'm, I'm actually going to lag also this one, you know, the BCI C3 lag. I'm, I'm going to also lag it. So I'm going to lag that as well. So sometimes, you know, this lagging increases the performance of the Actually, it, it will be best maybe to lag it here. Increases the performance of the model significantly. So I'm going to lag it. Here we go. Yep. So this value just comes here, okay? And this value comes here. So this is how we did the lagging. So here we are using 12 period lag. And here I moved the lawn variable in this side and I kept the I, I kept the cape size bulker original data to this side because I um I, I wanted to make make sure that my input variables are together and it it's it becomes easy to take them as it is in the regression. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I am uh I, I will just duplicate it one more one more version. Yeah, I'll duplicate it because what I want to do, I want to have them as numbers because I'm going to remove some of the rows and columns. Also these ones I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste them as as a number. Now that if I remove this, it will not be affected. And if I remove this, my series will not be affected. So this is kind of my data set structure for lagged structure, okay? So now I'll just go to data. I will go to data analysis tool, okay? So if you do not have this tool, you can install it from going here, file, you go to options, then you go to add-ins, you go to go, and here you select the analysis tool pack, okay, and that's it. It's also a good idea to also set up the solver add-in because in some of the forecasting examples, we use this. So now I go to data analysis. 
here you can see we have many tools actually you know for a lot of the things we don't really need very fancy tools excel can do a lot of analytical things so here we took the regression and in the regression here we need to now put the input y range so my input y range the variable is going to be from here january 2022 to december 2023 and my input x range is going to be all of these for the same period okay and then here i did not really take the data from the label i took it directly from the data part if you have selected also with the label column then you have to take the tick the label but since i haven't done it i don't have to tick that i want my outputs actually here so let's say i i want to have them uh, let's say somewhere somewhere here let's say okay and then okay then we get the all the outputs we'll also copy my variable names and i will put them in a transpose manner here so that we know so it's intercept is intercept that's fixed right then i put them here like this so i also have the variable names here It's just for better readability, so it was not really important. I didn't have to do that. These are our main coefficients. We can actually use them now to make the forecasts, okay? Our regression model has a R square of almost 80%, so that's actually pretty good. This is a pretty good R square, yeah? Uh, for beautification, we can make them like this, three digits, everything can be like three digits, actually, we don't need so big table yeah this is the main part that we are these are the main coefficients that we are going to use in our regression model now to do the forecast i can actually do it here so forecast we first need to take the intercept so i take the intercept we have to fix the intercept okay we have to fix the intercept so i use the fn and uh, f4 button in my keyboard to fix it it might vary in different computers sometimes in mac and windows it varies right so we take the intercept plus now we are going to multiply with all our with all the variables here and the coefficients actually better way of doing it would be let's say if i just keep it like this for now and then i put all the coefficients of the variables, I copy them and I flip it here. I flip it here. Oops, I should do it here actually. So I flip it here. So let's say these are my coefficients. Okay. Uh, these are my coefficients. I just have to make sure that they are in the correct order. It looks they're in the correct order. So now what we can do, so we, we take the intercept plus we can now use sum product. Our life can be made easy with this. Sum product, we can take our coefficients, okay? In my case, I have to use comma. In some computers, you might have to use semicolon. So we put the comma and then we take this one. Bracket close. We also have to fix the cell for the coefficients. We put F4 to fix our coefficient cells. Enter. It did not work. Let me try to see why it did not work. So I believe it did not work because I took the wrong cells here. So I start from C to K and then I start from D to K. So I'm not matching the, so I, I'm forgetting about the lag of the main variable, okay? So let's see if I make it to C, C2. C2 to K2. Yeah, now it works. Okay. Now we can just drag it down up to this point. So this way, now we actually have the forecast. Okay. So we can now actually plot them and see how our forecast looks like. If it, it's, it's too bad or how, how does it look like? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these two and all this period. And I'm 
holding my control button and then I'm selecting also this one here. And then I go to day, uh, insert recommended charts. I'm going to take a line chart. Yeah, this one is okay. And here is my line chart. Actually, it doesn't look so bad. It doesn't look so bad. It looks pretty good, actually, the forecast we have here. Yeah, you can do the design here. But yeah, you see, the forecast actually looks pretty good. But okay, plotting is nice, but we also want to see the, we, we also want to see, you know, uh, the accuracy metrics. I'm going to mainly focus on RMAC and um, uh, MAP. So I'm going to calculate like error squared error app percentage absolute Error. These are the three things I'm going to calculate here just to see the forecast accuracy metrics. So for the errors, it's basically actual minus my forecast. Can just drag it down until not here, but until we can do it here. Because for the test period, you know, our sample forecast, we do not have we do not have the real data. So basically, what we do is we rely on the accuracy metrics of our training part and based on that we uh, we consider how our uh, our sample forecast is going to be so if our training part accuracy is good for a model it means their out sample forecast is going to be also good for that model right so we have the errors here i'm just going to make it like three digits max then we do the, the squared error so we can just multiply the error with itself then we get the squared error and then we take the absolute error. So here, now we have to take the absolute of the error value and we have to divide it by the actual value to get the percentage error, right? So that's how we get the percentage. Just double checking if everything looks all right. Yeah, looks all right. In these two cases as well, we will not have anything and their values can be also reduced to three digits and here if i take the average of all this and also all this so this is MSE, mean squared error, and this is MAPE. And to get the root mean squared error, we just take the square root. In my keyboard, it's SQRT of the mean squared error, then we get the RMSE as well. So these are my accuracy metrics. So we have like a, I, the one I like the most is MAPE. Easy to interpret, so we have like 10.5% error here. So this is how we can actually do a lagged multiple regression and forecast the future uh, values of a time series. So I hope you will find it useful. In the next videos, I'm going to cover univariate uh, decisionalized, compo decisionalized uh, forecast approach and also another video on uh, MATLAB use in, uh, in forecasting this lag series. Cheers, bye-bye.